In this lesson, I'll show you how to solve an elastic collision force problem involving a steel ball striking a steel block. The question reads, a 1.0 kilogram steel ball is attached to a lightweight 1.0 meter long rod pivoted at the other end. The ball is released at the horizontal and strikes a 3.0 kilogram steel block resting on a surface with a coefficient of friction of 0.25. How far does the block travel? Let's begin with an illustration. Let's say we have a steel ball, I'll represent it with this purple circle, and it is attached to a rod that is pivoted at the other end, and it is being released at this position. And when it gets released, it hits a block that is also steel, and it's resting on a surface with a coefficient of friction. So when this gets released, it hits this block, and this block, which is currently at rest, will begin to move due to the impact. Now there's a lot to this problem. First, we need to keep in mind the conservation of momentum. We need to keep in mind potential energy and kinetic energy, and the formula that I've shown here, which relates the velocity of two blocks colliding after a collision, especially one that is elastic. So when they collide, they don't combine. And finally, we need to keep in mind the force due to friction, so the amount of work that is required to overcome this friction. All of that needs to be discussed. The very first thing that I want to calculate is the potential energy of this steel ball being at this position here without being released. Remember, potential energy is calculated using the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which I've represented as g, and it's 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height. All of this potential energy will go into the kinetic energy as it pivots from this position down to here. The formula for kinetic energy, you need to know this, is equal to half times the mass times the velocity raised to the power of 2. Now, because all of this potential energy is going into the kinetic energy, we can represent that mathematically by saying mgh is equal to half mv squared. Notice that I set these two expressions equal to each other, forming this equation. Now, from here, you can see that the mass units will cancel out. And if we solve, we can actually come up with the velocity of this ball at this point. So we're placing this g with 9.8, and we are told that the height, well, we're not told what the height is, but we are told that the rod is one meter. So we can assume that from here to here is one meter. And that will be our height. That's equal to 0 0.5, and the velocity is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and find out the velocity of this steel ball being pivoted from that rod. We can do that by dividing both sides by 0 0.5. That will cancel out this and that, and then subsequently square root both sides to get rid of this power of 2. 9.8 divided by 0 0.5, and we square root to get 4.42. Now you should get two values, one that's positive and one that's negative, but we will be using the positive version. So 4.427 meters per second is the velocity. And of course you can round this to 4.4 meters per second if you like. Now that we know the velocity of this steel ball, that actually represents the speed of the steel ball before the collision. So just for reference sake, let's call this A and B so that it corresponds to the formula that's been provided here. In addition, whenever you see a subscript of 1 in the formula, that means before the collision, and a subscript of 2 means after the collision. So if we read this formula, it is telling us the velocity of this steel ball after the collision is equal to all this. But we're not looking for that. We're actually looking for the speed in which this block moves after the collision. Therefore, we're looking for VB2. To modify this formula so that we have VB2, it's not that hard. So if you want this to be VB2, or the speed of block B after the collision, you change this to VB1, change that to VA1, and this MB becomes MA. 
So I'm just telling you this in case you're given one of these formulas and you're expected to know how to use both. So before I rewrite everything that I wrote here, notice that we have VB1 as a factor in this first term. The velocity of this block before the collision was zero. So VB1 is equal to zero meters per second. This means that all of this term will go to zero because anything times zero makes zero. Therefore, the formula we'll be using moving forward is VB2 is equal to this part of the equation. 2 times m sub a, or the mass of this steel ball, over mass of the steel ball plus the mass of the block times VA1. Let's go ahead and substitute everything we know. The mass of the steel ball, as given in the question, was 1 kilogram. And the mass of them combined, 3 plus 1, makes 4. 1 plus 3. And the velocity we found to be 4.4. Using our calculator, we'll take 0 0.5 times 4.4, and that makes 2.2. So the velocity of this block moving in this direction will be 2.2 meters per second. All of that kinetic energy that it exhibits, I can calculate the kinetic energy of this ball now using the formula before, Ke is equal to half times its mass of 3 kilograms times a velocity of 2.2 raised to the power of 2. All of that kinetic energy will go into the work required to overcome the friction from the ground. And to calculate the work, we take the force times the displacement. And in this case, we have a coefficient of friction. So I'll be multiplying the force by mu. That's the letter that I'll use to represent the coefficient of friction being 0 0.25. OK, so I have all of this kinetic energy, 0 0.5 times 3 times 2.2 raised to the power of 2 going into the work required to overcome the friction. Force is mass times acceleration. But in this case, it will be mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the mass was 3 times 9.8 times the distance which we're looking for times 0 0.25. The 3 and the 3 will cancel out. And we can multiply these two factors and then divide both sides by the product. 0 0.5 times 2.2 .2 raised to the power of 2 over the product of those two gives us how far this block will move. So 0 0.5 times 2.2 .2 raised to the power of 2 over 9.8 times 0 0.25. And that gives us a distance of 0 0.99 meters. You can just simply round to 1 if you like. And there you have it. That is how to solve a collision problem involving a steel ball striking a steel block.